Now I want to know how to do that at the enterprise level. So if anybody knows how to do that process at the enterprise level, I'd really be interested in hearing that. Lots of money in it too. So, um, Christian. Huh? You'll do your own bio? Awesome. Christian's going to do his own bio. Oh, great. Okay. So, yes, can you hear me okay? It sounds muffled. It sounds muffled. It sounds muffled. Is that any better? Yeah, put it closer to your collar. That's the one. Which collar? No, I don't want to. Is that any better? Yeah. No? No? Maybe she's in the mic. Is that working? No, you were in the mic. No? Okay. I'm going to try the mic. Just a minute. Okay, bring up the trail. Is that working? Is that on? Okay, better? Yeah. Okay. Touching mics, I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to try and focus in a little bit on, on exactly how to choose the type of fidelity, like we were just discussing right now, uh, based on, on, the, on the task that you're doing. So I'll focus in on, on usability testing. Um, just a quick bio uh, on me. Um, right now, I'll, I'll be going over a lot of the, the practices that we do at Disney Parks and Resort. Um, one thing to note is, you know, I've been I worked at iRise for four years, so I focused in. I thought, you know, lived, slept, ate everything, uh, uh, prototyping for four full years. So you know, I, I looked at the full spectrum of how prototypes can be used. So. You know, I don't want to give the impression that usability testing is the only reason I would use a prototype. Uh, I usually use it for, for all of these stages. Brainstorming being, you know, just, you know, whiteboard. You know, why not use a prototype? Because it's, it's simple enough to just throw elements on there. Um, and all the way down to training. So this might be, um, you have a call center, for instance, and you're building an application for them before it actually gets built out. You can go ahead and start training people on your prototype, depending on how far you take the fidelity and the, the depth, the breadth. So, um, I will be focusing on testing, but definitely consider it for the, the full breadth. I, I always use it from initial stages. So, the three stages that, that I'll be talking about right now, um, recent stuff that we've done with, with Disney, where it's uh, testing just wireframe, basic prototypes, straight out of uh, completely drawn in a shirt, um, or full fidelity, where we're actually working with a visual design team. Where we have, uh, you know, you can imagine at Disney we have very detailed use of our characters and our fonts and our color and everything. Um, so working with those things, as well as you know, sometimes it gets a little more advanced. So. Maybe we need to do a little hand, uh, hand coding to, to get the point across. So this is a lot of what Alexis talked about, uh, the various levels of fidelity, wireframe to visual design, uh, interaction, click through to uh, transitions and, tri and timing, gestures. So like we are talking about uh, on iPhones, uh, the extreme is when you're like actually prototyping the, the gesture in there. But that, that, that's a whole continuum. We shouldn't ever talk, talk about high fidelity or low fidelity. It's, it's much more complex than that. Um, dynamic data, like um, Stephen was talking about as well. Uh, single, um, the breadth, the way I, I usually think about this is, are we just prototyping the feature that we're building, that, that we're focusing on this one particular project? Or do we want to let the, the participant just explore and feel like they're they're in their home and just exploring this site. You know, typically that's not what you're testing, uh, but you have to look at your particular situation and figure out what what do I need to test, and don't build it just because the feature is there. That's one of the uh, probably the number one challenge that we had at iRise because you could do a lot. People felt like they had to do a lot. That's not the case. You know, focus on your work, not the tool. That going along with the, the that same path there. Okay, 
uh, when we're thinking about wireframe prototyping, you know, it's it's very quick, it's dirty. Yeah, uh, the participant the participant is going to make some leaps when they're looking at this. It works for a lot of sites. You know, when you're talking about financial and uh, data-driven sites, it, it it can work pretty well. Uh, once you're talking about high marketing value, a lot of uh, the Disney stuff, it's a little more challenging. But we still prototype. Well, we still test a lot with just wireframe prototypes. Um, the, the big thing here is when you're testing the big concept, uh, this is going to give you the biggest reach and be able to just uh, touch a lot of sections and give the participant the big picture, make sure they understand it. Because uh, we're not testing how the calendar widget works. So let's not, let's not get stuck on that. So we definitely use that a lot. Um, let me switch over, just to show very briefly an example of, of that wireframe. So here on the header, for instance, I'm not testing that. I just take a screenshot, knock the, all the colors out, get rid of the, the gradients, just so it's wireframe looking. But this is actually one image, as you can see there. It's one big image. Same thing on this side, side element. They're not even active. It's just dressing on the side of it. Makes the wireframe not as ugly. But it's still, still wireframe. Uh, I still bring in some color because I, I believe color has usability. Um, but you know it's very quick. So I'm using real widgets and I'm able to populate them with the real range that the business is asking me. So they say adult is one to nine, children is zero to six. Well, that, that sometimes changes. You get to the morning of the of the test and they say no, children is one zero to five. You have to go in and change it and do it just really quickly. So, you know, a, a, a big focus on on our uh, prototypes is changing extremely quickly. So, again, wireframe lets you test the the concept, and not the the detailed interactions, not the gestures. It's you know, do they get how to book a vacation package? The overall process. Um, and it lets you test out that those full 15 steps. When if you say, let's do 15 pages of, of uh, high visual fidelity, you know, your visual team may not be into that. <laughs> Sometimes you make them be into it. Um, one of the big things that we do is we iterate a lot. So first off, it's, like, it's getting the prototype right. It's uh, getting all the typos out of it, getting all the the actual prototype issues out of it. There's a lot of little details that you gotta fix. Uh, once we finally get to to the testing, if we do a test over a couple days, we'll probably do six iterations on it. We change practically every single test. And some of those are fixes. You know, we forgot to enable that one button or, or, or a typo here and there. But um, after two or three tests, you're already seeing trends and, and you might want to add a version in there or, or you start playing around with it. So definitely um, exploring and being able to be flexible during the test is a huge thing for us. Um, another way that we, we do the prototypes is the high fidelity. So this is, we take comps that the visual designers do from Photoshop, we throw them into a shirt, uh, put hotspots on them, test it out. Uh, nice thing about this is, is that it's very quick. Once you communicate and get the comps back, it's very quick. Like single image, single hotspot, you move on. Maybe you put some, some um, active radio buttons on it, for instance. Um, here, you know, just straight one image across the whole thing. Have you seen that? Um, it's always difficult to get rid of the selection. Uh, but basically, you know, we'll we'll enable. Okay, let me just do this. Okay, so we'll we'll drop in some real radio buttons, so so the guests can actually participate with it, you know, play around. But we're testing one path, so we don't need to make the other ones really live. Um, we drop in the, um, the real drop downs. We do 
our, our specific brand of, of uh, calendar widgets. The majority of the time, we do them real simple, where clicking anywhere on this uh, calendar, it'll just move you on. And usually the UT moderator will be able to uh, move the participant past the fact that it's, it's not the real date they selected or whatever. There's a, a set script. Um, usually this is not an issue. We just, you know, they get the idea of what they're doing. If you were to be actually testing this widget here, this, this element, uh, maybe you do want to go into more detail of, of how it looks when you select it. So maybe you do, you know, in, in Azure 6, there's a lot of uh, great extra features where you can do, in a, in a very simple way, uh, all the hover states for these. Um, if I go in and select this, that date actually went into this, this top level. When I open this back up, it's actually selected. And once I build this widget once, I just reuse it. Uh, I sure actually uh, is very smart about like, not getting confused about the different instances. So, you know, sometimes it pays off to spend, you know, half an hour building this one widget and you just reuse it. But it's in a very specific situation where you have um, a set visual language already. So, you know, we definitely do a lot of tests with high visual fidelity. Um, the, the big catch there is once you want to make a change, how are you going to go in and do that? Right? Um, let me just show this screen really fast. Um, so if you were just in straight wireframe and you're using native widgets, um, you can do that in, in very simple steps. But once you have a Photoshop element, just looking at a simple text change, you have twice as many steps to make that change. So let's say that you need to make that terminology change on five pages. You have 25 changes extra. Uh, sorry, 25 extra steps to make. If you're doing this in the middle of each um, <laughs> test, it's, it's significant, right? It starts building up. So we try and leave it, leave the prototype as simple as possible so that we can be as agile as possible. Uh, one of the, the times that we want to focus in on actually using visual, high visual fidelity on these is when there starts to be this blurry area between what's you know what's the interface and what's the visual design. Uh, when you have large images like this, you can't have a big X, and that's the the majority of your screen. You know, it, the participant needs to make too much of a mental leap themselves. So you know, sometimes you just have to go there, depending on your your brand. Um, okay, like I said, it's just one big image. You drop in a single hotspot to get you moving through the process, um, and and that's we do almost a, a half and half mix of uh, wireframe prototyping and, and high fidelity. Once in a while, we do hand coded. We we pull in some elements, so we may need a calculator or some filtering mechanism. Uh, you know, usually the prototyping tools really struggle to build that. Um, so you know that that's going to give you the most lifelike. It depends on how much resources you have. It's it, it's how in depth you can get, but I mean, it can be the real deal, right? Uh, the problem is that changes are extremely slow. A simple text change. You know, think about jumping into a, a bunch of files, figuring out where that one text piece lives, and you got to change it. It lives in five different pages. And all of this, you have to communicate it to a developer that then updates the code. It's a long process. And so the way we do this is to reduce the amount of code that is actually built, we have the, the Azure page. Uh, we can drop in an iframe that that then calls the, the hand-coded hand element. So a lot of times it's the big path is, um, is a concept which you're testing. You happen to have this calculator in the middle. Calculator is the only piece that you have to hand over. 
That means you, know, you have to explain less to to the developer, but that is a whole task, right? Um, do you have to write a spec because now you're working with a developer that expects a spec, but you can't write a spec on the concept. Um, you also have to deliver sliced images. All these extra things that you have to, to do once you're dealing with a hand-coded prototype. Um, and now this becomes, this is very, very minimal. This is not realistic. It would probably be three times this uh, number of files. Um, and keep in mind that each one of those files can have an issue. You're in the middle of your prototype, or your, sorry, your usability test, you hired a moderator, a facility, and the, the thing breaks. So once you have that coded element in there, it becomes extremely fragile. Um, add in changes, you know, not, now it's, we prefer not to change it and just, oh well, we'll deal with what we started with. So it, it, it can get very touchy once you start getting into um, the hand-coded area. So the return on investment, right? It takes so long to build this thing. A simple cal uh, calculator, you know, if in the test your task is only, you know, if they end up doing two plus two and you know, there's no real meaningful Test that they're doing on this, you already know that this element works and that it's going to be built. Just don't test it, skip right to the, the meat, the concept. And the majority of the time, that's what we're doing uh, testing concepts. So, um, jumping straight to, you know, when people call for a can code prototype, how do you? get away from it or how do you how do you mitigate it, right? So a lot of times just focusing in on what you have to test. Is it the concept that you need to test? Is it one specific uh, section of how filtering works? Uh, just focusing in the script will help you quite a bit. Um, and also looking at you know the new features. The um, Azure 6 has a lot of uh, calculations that you can do within the tool. IRISE also has a lot of calculations that you can do. Um, and just eliminating that extra step of having to communicate out to another team, another person. Us um, as, as UX designers, we can really just, we can jump to the point of what we need to test. So focusing in on that helps a lot. And that's it. So, questions we can have Steven and Alexis and... We're going to set up some chairs. Okay. Yeah. Huh? I just have a quick one about your last slide. Yes. <laughs> what were the calculations within the project? So, um, when you're doing financial applications... No, like true calculations. Like, yes. Yeah. 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 Adding up numbers. Um, a lot of it can be faked, which is what I'm talking about when you say... Uh, Oh, okay, sure. Focus in the script. Yeah. Because you can tell them, yeah, okay, you're gonna buy this and this uh, stock, and and this is what it's gonna equal. You're not testing about what type of stock, and, you know, in real time. So um, you can mitigate a lot of that, and it usually pays off quite a bit because it's. Um, once you're going into usability, uh, a lot of people want to focus in on the detailed interactions and, and how real life it can be. Uh, but that's, that's usually not what we do.